Uh, Chris was talking about the rock soil that we're putting in. So that's the, uh, we've got um, below grade, this is outside of the ICF foundation. We've got uh, EPS that goes uh, no higher than three feet below grade, and then we've got rock soil above that. And then um, the rock soil above grade, we've uh, uh, framed that into a wall with uh, uh, half inch plywood on the top. So a uh, key performance feature for me was not just, was uh, getting that uh, extra rock soil insulation above the, above the rim joist, because that's thermally one of the weakest parts in the house. And so uh, there's somebody that I've seen before uh, actually working on the site. <laughs> Uh, putting this uh, scratch coat of uh, mortar on before we uh, put the stone veneer in. I apologize for the poor lighting here, but we've got kind of a stone belt on the bottom around the house. Uh, Roger, you should explain uh, <coughs> why we have EPS on the walls and when we had rocks on the Oh, okay. So um, originally the design that Chris had was all EPS on the, excuse me, all rocks along the outside. And in the haste to get going, we um, the contractor had already bought lots of um, EPS. And then when we, when we ran the energy model again, we were well below the uh, a AHD. We were about 4.2, I think I remember. So we had some opportunities for uh, saving some money. So what we ended up doing was, uh, man, we already own the EPS. What do we, we can't unsell it or return it. So we ended up uh, deleting some of the rock soil we, did, we ended up deleting, we went from 12 inches of um, EPS below the slab down to 8 inches of EPS below the slab. And with that 4 inches of EPS, we ended up putting some of it well below grade on the outside, and that allowed us to reduce the amount of rock soil that we had to buy. So that's why we've got basically uh, 4 inch thick EPS below grade and then rock soil above grade. So, um, so we've got the raised heel trusses. And we've got, uh, again, that's the, the color doesn't hurt. The uh, sharpness isn't very good here, but we've got, uh, we will feel frame all the soffits and that allows us to put the uh, exterior advectitic sheathing right up to the bottom of the uh, roof uh, deck. We'll leave just uh, an inch and a half. Uh, here we are installing the uh, outer a width of the uh, double stud wall. And uh, again, as Chris mentioned, all, of, all our walls are built by Hancock Lumber, uh, both the um, wall built in a factory. And, and some of the oops here so far. So anybody see what the oops is here? This is uh, the uh, perimeter drain on the outside of the foundation. No, the fabric? Right, missing fabric. So. Uh, so, oops, okay, not a problem. They're very supportive, and when I explained to them, these guys have been doing this all the time. Uh, they said, you know, this is a better way. We're gonna do it like this in the future. Okay, so that was good. Uh, I don't know if you remember the picture you'd seen before, but that was pink, now it's green. That's because the green stuff is not high density, and this was at the bottom of the footer. So, uh, when I got there, uh, they had already installed all of this uh, using regular density EPS at the bottom footer, or on top of the footer, bottom of the foundation, so they had to pull that out and, and, and go buy the regular stuff, and the regular stuff was not available locally, so the guy went down to, had to go down to Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to buy it, and then came back with the wrong stuff, right color, wrong stuff, had to go down. So, <laughs> that's his problem. Uh, okay, so we use Logix ICF. Uh, boy, you know, I, I, I think it's a great product. And the sales pitch was, you know, it's just Lego blocks. If you can, if you could do Lego blocks as a kid, you can do this. So, uh, well, not quite. The, the guys who we had do the foundation, who the contractors selected, had done foundations all their career, but had not really worked with logic. So, um, we had separation like this on the poor in a, a lot of places. Uh, that's uplift. Um, the problem is when you pour concrete, well. The ICF is foam. Guess what? Foam is lighter than concrete. So, um, so there's separation. Not properly brazed, whatever. Um, and then, uh, so here's some more separation. And here's, uh, we had 12 foot high walls. And you can see, well, the problem was uh, it wasn't braced. It was braced up to about 10 feet in height rather than the full height of the wall. 
So I'm, um, you know, call it inexperience. I, you know, this created these two things: uplift and uh, out of plumb created some real problems from the, for the framers because they had to come back in and basically get everything back to uh, plumb and level before building the foundations. Um, here uh, we had we bought a uh, floor framing package from a very reputable um, dealer in, in uh, New Hampshire. And um, we have an odd angle in the house between the south portion and the north portion, 60 degree angle. So uh, they kept, uh, they, 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 they had so many problems. In, um, and one of the problems is instead of giving us 60 degree, now they designed the floor system, their design. Um, it was a 60 degree hanger, they supplied 45 degree hangers. Uh, well, so, um, yep, yeah, okay. So, anyways, fast forward, we ended up having to drill through the steel I beam to uh, uh, fur that out and put in um, the uh, 60 degree hangers that they actually supplied uh, two weeks later. Anything, see any problems with this picture? The uh, door is out of sync with the uh, columns. And that was just a problem with, uh, with the wall panel. It was so uh, feel framed to fix that. Uh, here is the windows over the south part of the south facade overlooking our bedroom windows. This was supposed to be the abbreviated overhang, uh, messed up. Uh, we ran the uh, PHPP model again, and we were still, we had enough headroom here that we're just going to leave that as it is. Uh, cost us about 0.5 in AHD. But we're still within the barrier, uh, within the uh, heat demand limit. Uh, this is a three season room outside of the um, thermal envelope, but that was to be the only room that had cathedral ceilings. So uh, when I came on, they, on site, they'd already installed the trusses there, but they were a flat ceiling. So uh, they ended up uh, having to take down those trusses and reinstall the cathedral trusses. Air ceiling. Um, we had. Uh, we had Hancock Lumber um, seal the sheathing to the, uh, all of the stud members. And when I went up there to take some video of them doing that, they were, uh, you know, it wasn't a continuous seal. So I told them that and said, oh, we'll get it, we'll get it right. But still, uh, as a woodworker, how do I know that there is proper glue in the joint to see glue squeeze out? Well, it was rare to see glue squeeze out on any of the frames. So um, and here's some other problems. You can see. You can see the level of shimmy that had to be done to get the foundation to be level uh, off the high point on them. So um, in this, putting on the uh, seal seal turned out to be something we should not have done because it's a real pain to try to foam underneath that. So we got smarter as we went along and we omitted the uh, seal seal and we're just uh, foaming on that. So one of the, um, as a homeowner, one of the most, one of the greatest inventions I've ever come across here in terms of a home building is uh, this aerosol gun. I'd always been the kind of a the squeeze gun, gun, which, you know, after a little bit, the hands get tired. This is just a marvelous invention, and I'm the one that's been doing all of the seals, all of the air sealing with uh, the foam gun, so all the work towards connections, I'm the one that's doing it. Uh, and it's frankly, it's, uh, it's low skill, but high incentive. Uh, it's time consuming, but, you know, I figure I'm low skill, and I have a uh, high incentive, so I'm, I'm qualified to do the work. And here's an example of, uh, of if you're not thinking ahead, we have uh, some of our wall pocket walls are, uh, are uh, 12 inches below the floor deck. And unless you foam the wood to wood connections before you stand the wall up, then you get a problem. So I'm, um, I'm hoping that a flexible plastic tube will be able to seal those wood to wood connections. So here's uh, my closing question. I leave with uh, with the mathematical uh, equation. I don't know if, uh, if any of you can solve that. <laughs> so here's what this means. Um, where Y is an experienced passive house consultant, that would be Mark Rosenbaum. Um, and three times zero are an architect, an architect builder, and an owner who have zero passive house experience. So can Y times three times zero equal one passive house home. <laughs> so my closing thought is stay tuned uh, <clears throat> and look at us on the web. Okay.